Hi, uh, how you guys doing? Um, in this video, I'm going to walk through creating a key performance indicator based on Team Foundation server data. Uh, key performance indicators are really popular in the you know finance and business side of things because they give you a very um, crisp picture onto a complicated set of data. So I want to try to do the same thing for Team Foundation server. Uh, what we'll do is we'll create a key performance indicator that tries to gauge whether our requirements are changing too much. So we'll look, you know, we'll we'll sound a warning bell if we see our requirements changing a little bit too much. And yeah, this is a nice sample of how to create a key performance indicator. There's probably a number of other metrics that we can pull out. We'll start uh, same way that we started with um, our data mining project. What we'll do is create an analysis services project. And again, this type of project gets uh, created for you, or you have the option of creating this type of project when you have uh, SQL Server installed with Visual Studio. Uh, what we'll do is we'll reference a, the Team Foundation Server warehouse. I have the data source created already. Um, have a look at my data mining video to see the details for creating um, a data source. We'll create the same view. You could, in fact, use that same project um, that we used in data mining. But what I'll do is I'll just run through and add the fact tables that I'm interested in. So I want to look at today, our current work item, and our work item history. And we'll just take the defaults for everything else. Now, instead of creating a mining structure, what we'll do is we'll create a cube. So let's create a cube based on this data. We can take most of the defaults and SQL Server will take care of us. We'll specify our time dimension as today. So that gives us a way of accessing some day by day sort of data. Or week by week, actually, I should say. So we'll specify week for a column. And that'll let us do some time based uh, calculations. And that's it. That um, has our cube created. So now let's process this cube. And all that's going to do is just deploy it out to our analysis services. Um, basically a build and compile. This dialog's kind of tall, so I have to run button at the bottom. All right, so let's get started. Uh, two tabs that we're interested in. Uh, calculations for the cube and our KPIs. Um, our key performance indicators uh, will use some calculations. So let's build um, some calculations first. And calculated numbers, you know, I like to think of them as basically just functions onto the cube. So what we're going to look at is um, how often our work items are changing state. So let's have a state change average. So on average, how often these work items are, are uh, changing state. Make a little room for ourselves. And what we'll look at are the measures of the cube that we have already. So the first thing I'll look at is the state change count. So this is just across our entire Team Foundation Server data warehouse, how many, time, how many times work items have changed state. I'll divide that by the number of work items that we have, so our current work item count. And that'll give us an average of how many state changes we have. Uh, for each work item. And let's do a little bit of formatting. Format that with two decimal places. So we've got one state change average. Let's add another calculated member and this is going to be state change goal. So how many state changes we would like to see inside of our system. This is just going to be a fixed number. Um, I'll use a pretty low number. We'll just use three. So if you imagine the work item is created, so that's one state. Uh, resolved another state and then closed another state. Um, that's pretty strict, but um, I just want to keep the number a little bit low um, given the data set that we've got. And we'll do the same formatting numbers. So that gives us two calculated members, and if we process everything again, that'll deploy these two calculated members um, onto our analysis services database. Now with our calculations in place, let's go and create that key performance indicator. So we'll call this our work item KPI. 
And what we want to create here is a value expression, a goal expression, a status, and a trend. So with our value expression, we just want to um, express what the value of a given uh, key performance indicator is. So that's just going to be pull. We'll just pull that directly from our measure, and that is just the state change average. Our goal in this particular case is just going to be the goal calculation that we set up earlier. So that's not particularly interesting. Where what's really interesting is our status expression. I've also set our status indicator. So these are the visualizations that we can use for a key performance indicator. So things, you know, high level things, a road sign, a traffic light, you know, red, yellow, green sort of thing, we'll do shapes. That's basically, you know, um, a green, a yellow, and a red. Statics our status expression is where things get interesting. So what we'll do is we'll look at the different cases um, that are possible. So when our you know, state change average is less than our goal, you know, that's ideal. That's kind of what we're looking for. So we're, we'll return a 1. Um, and the return values correspond to our status indicators. Basically, the key performance indicator is looking for a value between, you know, um, from, from negative 1 uh, to 1. And that depends on the indicators that you happen to be using. So let's say when our when eighty percent of our average is less, then we're okay. So we'll return to zero. Otherwise, we'll raise a red flag, and we'll do that by returning a negative one. So a couple different cases that we have uh, for our status expression. Let's go and deploy that. And that deploys our key performance indicator out onto the server. Now, I've got a viewer with um, the SQL Server uh, project type. And the browser view gives me the view of my key performance indicator uh, the same way that it's going to look inside of um, a client. So in this particular case, I can see, okay, my work item KPI, the value is 3.6, my goal is 3. That's within my threshold of um, 80%, so it's just giving me a status of a warning. So I get a little yellow triangle to say, you know, this is something that we want to keep an eye on. So what's missing here is the trend. I don't see a trend to see if with, whether this is going up or down. So what we can do is fill in our uh, trend indicator. So this is when that today table comes into play. So what we'll look at is when um, we'll look at a previous week to see if that's increasing or decreasing. So first, if it's empty, there's not too much we can say about that. We'll look at pre, pre the previous member. Now I want to look at my state average. When my state average is greater now than it was the previous week, let's mark that as increasing. fair bit of typing to do here. So we'll look at our previous week. So what we're looking at here is our state change average calculated member. If that is greater than that member last week, then what we're going to say is that our trend is increasing. Obviously. And in a, in a more realistic case, we'll probably put more case statements here. But what we'll finish off with is we'll say if our state change average is equal to our state change average from the previous week, we'll say it's holding pat. Otherwise, we'll signal a negative 1. So let's reprocess our cube. And this should give us a trend indicator inside of our browser view.
I switch to my browser view, I can see that I've got an even trend. So we're holding, we're holding steady in terms of a trend, uh, in terms of our status overall. So warning because we're getting a little bit away from our goal of, uh, of having just three uh, state changes per work item on average. So quick example of creating a key performance indicator and being able to encapsulate um, a gut feel uh, for a complex set of data. And you encapsulate that gut feel with a combination of calculated members as well as um, logic to indicate status and logic to indicate trend. Now there's a number of different clients that you can use to view a key performance indicator. One of the most interesting ones is uh, Microsoft Business Scorecard Manager. Uh, and I'll do uh, another video to show how you can bring this key performance indicator into a client application like uh, Business Scorecard Manager. Again, just uh, experimenting with these videos, so if you have any comments, please let me know. Um, otherwise, take care.